Madoka Magica is my favorite horror anime. Now, I know some people may disagree with it being a horror anime, but in my opinion, it has a ton of elements that make it an amazing psychological horror anime. On the surface, Madoka Magica looks like a cute anime about magical girls, except it is anything but that. And it's actually one of the reasons Madoka Magica became so popular in the first place, because it was one of the first anime to take the magical girl genre that's usually filled with cute magical girls doing cute things and take a much darker approach, where these cute magical girls are thrown into a truly horrifying world. Nowadays, there are a lot more anime that do what Madoka Magica did. School Live and The Promised Neverland, while not being in the magical girl genre, are two good examples of shows that look really innocent but are actually kind of horrifying. But Madoka Magica did that before any of those did, and in my opinion, it does it better. So in this video, in celebration of Halloween, I wanted to talk about my favorite horror anime and take a look at what makes Madoka Magica truly horrifying. To start off, I'll go over the plot, and later on in the video I will be getting into some spoilers, but for the first half of the video, it will be spoiler free. And I will let you know right before I get into spoilers. So with that said, what is Madoka Magica about? Well, Madoka Magica follows a girl named Madoka who goes to school and has friends just like a normal girl her age. But one day her life changes when Madoka and her friend Sayaka come across a creature named Kyubi, who's getting attacked by the new transfer student at their school named Homura. But before Homura kills Kyubi, a magical girl named Mami steps in to save him. Then, after being saved, Kyubi tells Madoka and Sayaka that they also have the potential to become magical girls, just like Mami, if they form a contract with him, in exchange for having their wish granted. But Mami warns them that being a magical girl is an extremely dangerous job, where you have to fight against Mami monsters known as witches. After hearing this, Madoka and Sayaka decide to accompany Mami when she hunts witches to see if having their wish granted is truly worth the danger of being a magical girl. Now probably the best thing about Madoka Magica is how well the psychological horror is done. At first it may seem like it's not too hard fighting witches, I mean you get any wish you want granted and then you have to just fight monsters with your newfound magical powers, but you soon realize how truly horrifying that is. As a magical girl, you're forced to fight against against witches, and you never know when you might get killed while fighting. And having these kids fight these horrifying witches can take quite a toll on them mentally. And the setup to realizing how horrifying this anime is, is great. At first, it seems like something doesn't feel quite right, but you don't realize how dark it's gonna be until the end of the third episode, when something happens. Now, I won't talk about what happens in episode 3 yet, but later on in the video I will. So the first two episodes are very eerie and have this dreamlike feeling. Well, I guess the whole show has that feeling, but I feel like it feels like that especially in the first two episodes. The world these characters are in feels very empty, and you never really see any people other than the main characters, except when they're at school, but the school feels equally as dreamlike. All the classrooms are basically glass boxes, and looks like no other school I've ever seen before. Also, the studio that did this anime really added to that eeriness. It's done by Studio Shaft, who from all the anime I've seen them do, like to use a lot of different camera angles. So for example, you'll get a lot of close-ups on the character's eyes, and then you'll get a camera panning up the side of the character, then a close-up shot of another character. The camera never really stays in one place for very long. And in the case with Madoka Magica, there are a lot of shots that never really give you a good look at the surroundings. For example, whenever Madoka is in her house, you can't really see out the windows because of the light coming in, and any shots outside of the house are close up so you can't see any surrounding houses. Later on in the series, there are shots of the city, but you never really see any people, and it always feels really empty. On top of this dreamlike feeling, the witches are very creepy too. So when they go with Mommy to fight a witch, they journey into some place called a labyrinth, which is basically another dimension that the witch lives in. And inside, it's this nightmare-like world with some amazing visuals that make this world come to life and feel like something straight out of a nightmare. There are also these paper mache-like creatures, who are basically the witch's minions, and they're extremely creepy. Also, since they went with this paper mache animation and art style, it's kind of unsettling seeing them next to the 2D animated girls, but it works 
really well. And then the witches themselves are just as creepy. Each witch and each labyrinth looks unique, so each time they go into a labyrinth, it's just as creepy as the first time. But anyways, because of the very creepy witches on top of the dreamlike eeriness, it's obvious that something isn't quite right with the world. But by the end of the third episode, you realize that this will be a pretty dark series, not just about cute magical girls fighting creepy monsters and having fun, but a very dark series. And this is reflected by the ending songs of the anime. The first two episodes have this song. It's a very sweet and peaceful sounding song. Then episode three and every episode after that has this ending song. As you heard, the two are very different songs with two very different tones. And I think the reason for this is because if they played the second ending song at the end of the first two episodes, you'd be more likely to think that this is going to be a dark anime because of this dark sounding song. So to have you be unsure about whether this was going to be a dark anime or not, they have that very happy sounding ending song in the first two episodes. And speaking of music, the soundtrack of Madoka Magica is amazing. Each OST sounds so good and always fits well with the tone of whatever scene they're accompanied by. And this is an anime that I would recommend you watch with headphones on because of how much the music adds to the experience. Now, I didn't watch it with headphones on, but I still enjoyed it, but I do wish I watched it with headphones because I think that just would have enhanced the experience, but it's still just as good even if you don't. A lot of times, OSTs become background noise that you kind of just ignore. Not every anime is like this, but Minoka Magica's OSTs greatly improve the experience, and I don't think it would have been nearly as good without them. Also, the OST OSTs that play during a fight with a witch are so good, and they are some of my favorite battle themes in anime. Oh, by the way, if you don't know, OST stands for Original Soundtrack. I'm only saying this because for the longest time I had no idea what it stood for. Now, the characters in Madoka Magica are great as well. Madoka is a very nice girl, and it's honestly kind of sad seeing her get thrown into the terrifying world of magical girls. Now, that's a sentence I never thought would come out of my mouth, but she's a really great character, and I like everything they do with her. I also really really like every other character in the anime, but this is where I'm gonna have to get into spoilers, because to say what I want to say about them, I need to go into spoilers. But before I do, for anyone who hasn't seen Madoka Magica yet, I would highly recommend you check it out. It's a really good story with some great twists and turns, great characters, music, animation, and it's all around a really good series. So if you want to go check it out and then come back to this video, then I'd recommend you do that. And now I will be getting the spoilers, so get out of here if you don't want to be spoiled. Okay, now that those people are gone, let's get into the other characters. So to start off, Mommy, I thought the way they handled her character was great. The first time I watched the anime, I thought she wasn't really that good of a character, and I didn't think it was really sad when she died, but on my second watch through, I really liked her, and I thought her character was written really well. She becomes friends with Madoka and Sayaka, then goes with them to hunt witches, and she's not completely alone anymore. She still is, since they haven't become magical girls like her, but she's not completely alone. But then Madoka finally decides to become a magical girl with her, and she starts crying because she finally won't have to do this on her own. But right when Mommy is extremely happy about this, the witch that she thinks she defeated sheds its weird doll body and bites her head off in front of Madoka and Sayaka. And this is also a really important scene for Madoka's character development, since this completely changes Madoka's mind about becoming a magical girl. She realizes that you can die at any time and is actually terrified of becoming one. This is also when the ending song changes. Changes. What happens to Mommy lets you know that this is going to be a pretty dark series where people are going to die. And I think Mommy's character is done so well. Her death is very impactful, not just for the viewer, but for all the other characters. And I think it's one of the best character deaths in anime. Now, Sayaka, I think what happens to her is even more tragic. She decides to become a magical girl to heal the boy she loves so he can play the violin again. And at first, she says she won't regret her decision and is really happy about it. But this is where her downward spiral begins. She gets into a fight with Kyoko and completely loses. Then she finds out that her soul gem is where her soul is and it's no longer in her body, which makes her really upset because she feels she's basically just a walking corpse with no soul. Then she finds out that 
that her friend has feelings for the boy she likes, but Sayaka feels that she can't be with him since she's not human and has to give him up to her friend. And because of all these upsetting things that have happened to her, she starts to go a little bit crazy and fight witches while not caring whether or not they hit her since she can just heal. Also, this scene is really great. I like how all the characters are just silhouettes, except when it zooms in on Sayaka's face to show how she's slowly losing her mind. And then right after this, she gets into a fight with Madoka, and then one of the darker scenes in the show happens. When she gets on a train, Sayaka sees these guys who are talking really badly about their girlfriends, and Sayaka is at her lowest point here, where she's starting to think that there's no point in saving people since they're all trash. And it's implied that Sayaka kills the guys on the train, which I really like how it doesn't directly tell you or directly show you, since you can tell that she did kill them when Kyoko goes to see her, and Sayaka shows Kyoko her completely black soul gem while crying, and she says that she made a mistake. Then she turns into a witch. I also like when it's revealed that QB is the main antagonist. Even though I saw it coming from a mile away, I think it was done really well. And watching it a second time, you can tell just how evil QB was even in the beginning. He constantly would suggest becoming a magical girl and would say it in a way that makes it sound like he's trying to help and just wants the best for them. But he's not actually this nice cat thing that wants to help them. Now I'm just gonna say, QB being some sort of alien sent to get energy for his planet was a little confusing. It didn't take away from any of the show for me, but I think it just made the ending not make that much sense in terms of his motivation to make the magical girls. So QB turns them into magical girls to get energy for his planet, I think. I actually can't remember what exactly he needed energy for, but the point I was trying to make is that he also knows that if Madoka becomes a magical girl, she'll basically be a god, which is why I don't get why he turned her into one, since the entire universe was rewritten anyway, so it didn't really matter if he got energy from her or not. I mean, it may just be that QB didn't think that Madoka would sacrifice herself and rewrite the universe, but either way, I thought it was kind of confusing. I don't think it's that big of an issue, but it did have me questioning QB's logic behind making her a magical girl. Now I want to talk about Kyoko. She's my least favorite character. I like her, but I just thought that the other characters were better. I think her backstory about why she became a magical girl was very depressing, and I like what happens with her and Sayaka. I feel that Kyoko sacrificing herself to kill Sayaka after she became a witch was really great, and I feel it was the only direction her character could have gone in. She shows up and fights with Sayaka, but she slowly started becoming friends with her because she didn't want her to make the same mistake she did, where she made a wish for someone else only for for it to end in disaster. So her sacrifice made sense since she related to Sayaka and didn't want to see her hurt herself because she's upset about someone else. And even though she's not my favorite, I do think the way her character was handled was really great too. Now finally, the last character I want to talk about is Homura. I thought she was another great character and she's one of, if not my favorite character in the series. I really liked how at first she doesn't seem to care about anything or anyone, but as the show goes on, you see glimpses of her caring when and Madoka is involved in something dangerous. And you get a sense that she cares about Madoka, but you don't know why. But when you find out she time traveled, everything makes perfect sense. The reason she didn't seem to care about anything is because she's lived through horrible things happening over and over again, while she was unable to stop it from happening every single time. She's had to watch Madoka, who was the first person to make friends with her, as well as Mami, Sayaka, and Kyoko die over and over again. So it's no wonder she's becoming numb to her feelings, but despite Despite that, she still cares for Madoka, and I just really like the way her character was written, and it's why she's one of the best characters in the show. Also, I want to talk about the ending. At first, I didn't really like the ending, but I really liked it on my second watch through. Throughout the show, you see Madoka continuously not be able to do anything for her friends, and see them die one after another, all while she's too scared to become a magical girl. But then at the end of the show, she's finally able to make everything right, even if it's at the cost of her life, and she does it because of how much she cares for her friends, and for her, it didn't matter what happened to her as long as the ones she cared about were safe. So her sacrifice totally makes sense, and was built up extremely well, and I now realize how great this ending is. It wraps up the characters in a pretty good way, and is a very sad ending, but also a happy ending for everyone but Madoka.
And it's because of the good character writing, the great visuals, the interesting story, and the very creepy, unsettling vibe the anime gives off. That this is my favorite horror anime of all time. I know I haven't seen a whole lot of horror anime, but compared to all of them, none of them have been able to pull off what Madoka Magica was able to accomplish. But I'm curious to know what your favorite horror anime is, and if you're watching it this Halloween. And if you're interested in the horror anime videos I've made in the past, then click the playlist on the screen to check out the other horror anime I've talked about. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you enjoy it, and I'll see you all next time in my next video.